Hi there, in this video I'm going to have a go at machining the water hopper for the Jerry Howell farm boy. Well, I've 3D printed the uh, water hopper. It's made up of two parts. And now I need to get my thinking cap on because I'm not too sure how to make that out of that. and uh, just gradually machining down to dimension. So first of all I'm going to open up this container for the water and uh, it needs to be just over one and a half inches deep and uh, to a diameter of 1.72 of an inch. So uh, I'll start off with this six millimeter drill. I've already obviously centered it. I've used a center drill. Um, so I'll uh, drill to a depth of uh, 1.5 of an inch using this six millimeter drill bit. Then I'll gradually uh, build up to around about 12 or 14 and uh, then I'll use a boarding bar. got the revs on fairly slow because I don't want this thing coming out with the chuck but uh, I think it's pretty tight in there. Okay, so uh, we're just about there in terms of diameter, but before I do the finishing cut, I'm going to put the boring bar in the middle at the bottom and gradually withdraw it backwards this way, uh, just to clean up this bottom here, because there's some ridges in it. But I'll have to do that off camera. And now for the finishing cut on fine feed.
I need to do now is cut a little section out here for the top just to fit in. But I'll do that off camera. OK, so the next step is to machine this hole through here and this will take the cylinder sleeve. Now, I sort of debated long and hard in terms of how to approach this and I thought I'd um, take the same approach or similar approach that I used uh, for between centre boring. Um, so I've set the workpiece up on the cross slide and got it all centred and parallel with the lathe bed and everything. It's taken me about a morning to do all that. Uh, I'm very happy with the way it's set up and the idea is that I'm going to put a three jaw chuck on here um, and use various drill bits to start drilling right through. Once I get to a decent size I'm going, then going to use this boring head. Now um, once I've opened it up with the boring head um, to get it close to the final dimension I'll use my between centre boring bar. So all good so far. And now I've just realised that this boring head has got an R8, um, what, what would you call it, shank. Now I've got another shank, which is a 2 most taper shank. But unfortunately, um, this lathe takes uh, a 3 most taper. So um, I've had to uh, go online and order a 3 most taper shank for this boring head. Um, and also what I've had to order is some threaded rod, um, some M12 rod, so I can, create, um, I can make a draw bar uh, as well at the same time. So unfortunately, um, work stopped at the moment until I get all those bits and bobs. Uh, anyway, when I do, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. Well, I've just realised I can actually make a little bit of progress at the moment. So I've put this uh, collet chuck on the lathe. Um, I've centre drilled. And I'm going to use this um, stubby 6mm drill bit to start with. OK, so I'll now I'll put a longer one in and see if I can get through this end. Well, I'm happy with that. It came through pretty much spot on centre. Um, so I'll continue progressing through uh, the drill bit sizes until I get to well, I suppose the maximum I can go with drill bits uh, and then I'll get back to you. Well the uh, three most taper shank arrived so that's good um, but as soon as I fitted it I came across another limitation. Um, this small diameter cutter here uh, for the boring head um, isn't quite long enough to go right through uh, from that distance to that distance and then I found that if I sort of extend the tool out of the head a little bit, um, I can probably just make it. But then I found that this section here was too big to go through the hole. So I've had to uh, grind that down. Um, so now it's at a diameter that will fit through that hole. And the other thing I've done is uh, I got a bit of uh, threaded rod and made um, a draw bar. It's a bit of a temporary arrangement is this because ideally uh, I'd like to make a washer uh, that fits in there properly. I don't really uh, want to do it this way. I've just got a plain washer um, above this threaded bit and, and obviously I don't want to damage the threads. Um, so once I've completed this milling operation I'll make something better to fit in there. Okay so I'm going to use manual feed on the carriage to take it nice and steady and uh, I'll probably be turning round about uh, between three and 400 RPM.
Okay, so I'll uh, extend the head this way by, by another, um, what would it be, uh, 0.2 of a millimeter going by this dial here. Um, and then I'll take another cut and I'll carry on going. At some stage I'll uh, put this larger tool in, which is actually long enough uh, without having to sort of grind anything down on it. Um, and I'll continue until I get up to about one point uh, one of an inch. So this is using the uh, larger tool. So that was on fine feed and uh, it's well over an inch in diameter now so um, I'll replace the boring head with the between centers boring bar. So this is the uh, Hemingway's between centers boring bar and uh, I'm cutting at uh, 10 thou increments at a time and using the uh, sort of uh, the coarse feed on the carriage. Steady away. So to adjust the tool, uh, which is there, use this uh, micrometer and um, you put the micrometer, slide it onto the shaft and just finger tighten it up so that the end of this screw is just nicely snug up against the end of this tool. And you uh, just release that screw and then turn it 10 increments. Tighten it up and then take it off the bar. And this is the final finishing cut. Well, I'm starting to get into this between centre boring. Um, very happy with that. It's supposed to be a nice push fit, and it is. So now I need to work out how to drill these holes here right through so it's quite a distance um, so I'll have a think and then I'll get back to you so having slept on it uh, I think I'm going to do this next uh, bit of machining using a combination of the rotary table and the milling machine and um, as I mentioned before these three holes go right through the uh, water hopper and uh, the idea is that these are held on by these long uh, bolts which screw into the main body. Now um, the instructions suggest that you start from the other side 
Um, not too sure why. Uh, but having said that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach it from both sides. So I'm going to drill halfway down here because my drill bit is, is quite short. I've got some longer ones, but I think I'll I think they'll just wander off if I try and go all that sort of length. So I'm going to go down halfway for all three, and I'll switch it round, and then I'll repeat again do those three. Now these four here, uh, I believe, are to hold the cylinder head on. So I'll do those at the same time while it's on the rotary table. So the rotary table is already centred uh, on the milling table and the way I centre it is I use this it's a blank two moss taper um, with the end turned down to 14 millimetres and I just put that in a chuck uh, in the spindle and then dr just drop the spindle down like that into there so the table automatically centres itself and then I bolt it down at the sides like I say I've already done that. Now to hold the water hopper on the table um, I decided to make that. It's a piece of aluminium. Now this bit here, the outside diameter of that fits inside um, the hole where the um, liner will fit and um, this bit here is two more taper that I've just turned down on the lathe. So that fits in just nicely in there. Perfect. Now what I need to do is fit that on there, bolt it down and then I can start uh, centre drilling and uh, drilling for real. Okay so just before bolting it to the rotary table I made sure that the side was perpendicular with the top of the um, milling table, which it is. Then I moved the y-axis forward by 0.83 of an inch and I centre drilled um, at the point that I've marked up already. So I'm confident that the, the point I'm on is where it should be drilled. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill through um, as, as far as I can with this drill bit, um, I think it's 7 64ths of an inch, this drill bit. Call it chucking, uh, holding the drill bit very well. But I think we got there. Um, so what I'll do now is uh, I'll move the rotary table 120 degrees and I'll drill in that position. Then I'll rotate it another 120 and drill there. But I'll do all that off camera. So I've drilled all three holes now. You can't see the two at the back. And uh, when I started drilling them I was using a collet chuck because I thought my uh, normal chuck won't fit in but it just fits um, so that the other two holes I use the uh, normal drill chuck um, and now all I need to do on this end is to drill an oil hole half an inch deep with this uh, 3 30 seconds of an inch drill bit Okay, so the drawing shows a recess here where this oil hole is and uh, it's for an o-ring to create a seal. So I've just uh, made that based upon an existing um, o-ring that I've got. Now the drawing also shows a recess around here, um, but there's no reference to an o-ring. But I, th I think there must be one to create a seal. Um, 
So what I'm going to do here is I've, I've looked up um, O-rings on Simply Bearings and I've found that I can get hold of a 34mm one, an outside diameter of 34mm and it's a, a millimeter sort of thick. So what I've done is I've um, moved the table, the x-axis, sorry the y-axis this way um, so I'm positioned um, this outside edge of the cutter is um, it will make a 34 millimeter diameter uh, recess. I'm going to go down to a depth of um, 33 thou. So I'll continue cutting down in uh, 10 thou increments until I get to uh, 33 thou and then I'll get back to you. Well that all seemed to work out okay. Um, so what I need to do now is to repeat a similar process on the other side. Hopefully the holes will line up and I need to drill and tap these other four holes as well for, the, for this cylinder head. Um, but I'll do all that off camera. Well that seems to have worked out okay. Uh, I did run a drill bit through each of the holes just to make sure they joined up and they do. So I'm happy with that. What I also did off camera was I made the top. And this was quite straightforward. Um, all I did was um, in a piece of uh, aluminium bar um, on the lathe drilled through and used a parting tool to part down to that depth there and then I used um, a left hand or rather a right hand tool um, on the compound slide set at 20 degrees to cut that angle and then I used a left hand tool again on the compound slide to cut on the outside and I just parted it off and uh, I think that's worked out really well. I'm very happy with that. So all I need to do now is um, create a boss on here and on the other side and uh, round these edges. So I think I'm going to do this uh, on the rotary table on my new milling machine. Well this is certainly something I couldn't have tackled on the uh, mini mill. So what I've done is I've uh, centred the rotary table then I've put the workpiece in the vise and then centred the workpiece uh, where the hole is um, for the cylinder sleeve and uh, clamped it down and uh, I think we're good to go. Well this is the first time I've used this milling hanger so what I need to do is to machine this boss which is two inches in diameter um, and this top edge here needs to have uh, an eighth of an inch radius uh, cut on it. Now I've not got um, what, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch cutter. Um, I've got a six millimeter cutter. So what I've done is I've offset the Y axis by an inch plus three millimeters, which is obviously half the, di the diameter of my six millimeter cutter. 3 millimetres equates to 0 0.118 so I'm happy that uh, it's the cutter's positioned right on the piece and I need to cut to a depth of um, 0.155 of an inch So now I'm going to remove the rest of this material using this uh, face end mill.
So I'll continue milling this off and then I'll get back to you. Well that turned out okay. So what I need to do now is uh, using this end mill, this straight end mill, is to take these corners off. And I need to go halfway down. Well this is going to take a while so I'll uh, get back to you once I've uh, got down to round about there. Well I've uh, decided to change my approach, I've been using the end mill to go downwards um, but now I've decided to go sideways so I think I can uh, do it a bit quicker. I'm taking 15th hour off at a time. Well that pretty much worked to plan. So uh, all I need to do now is repeat the same process on the other side. But I'll do all that off camera. Well that ended up being a bit of a marathon. Um, but I got there in the end. And uh, this new mill, uh, without it, without the extra head height, um, it would have been a little bit more complicated I think. Um, so without it I think I would have had to use a mandrel and uh, turn the boss, both, both bosses on the lathe and then um, to turn this curved bit here I think I might have had to put on a rotary table using the mandrel and uh, just turning it like that and then milling across it I guess. Um, but uh, this, this new mill I'm really impressed with. The only negative thing I would say about it is there's um, a digital readout here for the quill and there's no backlight. And uh, I don't know why they haven't put backlight in it. I mean, I know it's battery powered, but I'd uh, rather change batteries more frequently than uh, you know, not be able to see the display. But anyway, apart from that, it's fantastic. Um, so, I got there in the end. And uh, I hope you like the result.